Good afternoon and welcome to the Q Courthouse. This is a rare treat to have all these artistic forms together in the one place. The beautiful artwork that you've already experienced from Lorraine and Eloise and Ross. And we have an exquisite poem from Janine, two poems from Janine coming up. And the reason that we're all here is for the exquisite playing of Nerida. So we are so blessed to have all the great composers that she is going to share with us. And also, the thing with Nerida's performing is that it's an educational thing as well because she's got such a vast area of knowledge on, in these composers. And so it really takes us back and we, it's a great opportunity to learn about these composers as well. The theme of today, among others, is one of rebirth. So perfectly in the time of spring, and also perfectly with the tempest going on outside and the storms that can happen in our lives. And then after the storm, the gentle shoots come up with the rebirth. So that's the theme of today. So without further ado, I would like to introduce to you Nerida. his first partita. He wrote six in total and each of them are a suite of six dancers. Um, 
I'm going to play the next three, the Saraband, the Minuet 1 and 2 in Jig as, as a group. But I just wanted to circulate an a image that I've got here. It's uh, comparing a Bach manuscript with um, original manuscript of Beethoven. And the thing that um, really struck me when I was looking at the uh, original manuscript of Bach is that it, everything he's written, he's written the lines of every single staff. And there's just this gentle undulation to them. But the precision, because this was all done by, without a ruler, because if you can see that the, the, the lines are not straight. But the, just, just the precision in his mind that comes out when you look at this manuscript. And he was doing this... Oh, every second of his life almost. He did a, wrote a, a massive uh, volume of work, over a thousand pieces, and some of these pieces are like and five hours long, and some of them are short, like that little alaman that you've just heard. So he's, uh, he's an incredible composer, so I'm just going to circulate that um, as we move on to the next uh, three. Um, so just, just to note, the Saraband is a Spanish stately dance. It's like the centrepiece of the, uh, the suite of the, um, this particular partita. And then uh, we're going to hear the, the minuets. And um, hopefully you've had a chance to have a look at the artwork in the, the foyer before you came. And Lorraine has done a piece of lilies uh, called the Dancing Lilies. And I think sort of like um, the fact that the minuet is French inspired from Louis XIV's court and, and her um, image of the Dancing Lilies is, is a lovely connection to make. Um, and then we move on to the jig. But as you're listening, um, please, please think about sort of like how the music and the artwork uh, sit side by side.
busy schedule. She has a um, breakfast club soul food uh, retreat coming up. Uh, this is her core business but the singing is uh, something that she does for enjoyment and um, we're just uh, so fortunate that we're going to um, be able to listen to Dale and her, her lovely voice. Would you like to say something about the song? Uh, yes, this song is called <laughs> Say to Mummy and it's a love song. And so the title is If You Love Me, and it, but it's like a cat and mouse game. So she's really kind of playing with him. I think she really does love him, but, and I think he really loves her, but she's not just going to um, lay down her life for him at this point. So it's a cat and mouse game, so that's the um, theme of this song. <laughs> Oh, 
we come to the centerpiece of the program, and uh, Janine is going to help me out with this. Uh, she wrote this poem called Kintsuki, which is about the Japanese uh, art of pot mending. The um, artisan would uh, gather the broken fragments of the pot together and bind them together with gold leaf. And the broken article then turns out to be something more beautiful in its um, incomplete form than it was when it was perfect and all in one piece. And to me that resonated well with where Beethoven was at when he wrote the um, Tempest Sonata. And the weather is doing uh, wonders for this piece. So when I would play this in Ho Chi Minh City, I would be late for my concerts because the, 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 the heavens would open and the roads would flood. I wouldn't even make it to the concert venue sometimes. So it seems to be a tradition that when I bring out the Tempest Sonata, <laughs> the, <weather's laughs> the weather throws something out at, at us for the concert. So well done for getting, uh, getting here and getting through all of that weather. Now, um, a bit about the uh, sonata. Um, it's uh, three movements. The first movement, which we don't hear today, is very stormy. It's where Beethoven, I feel, is uh, looking at uh, his, his broken life. He's had deafness for six years and he can't do anything about it. So the realisation that this is how he, this is his new state is, has dawned on him and he's devastated. At the same time, he's thinking, well, it's just too much. I'm going to end it all. But compounded into that suicidal thought is the fact that he is Catholic. And the, for the Catholic, it is an immortal sin. So he's, he's venturing into the, the field of eternal damnation. So it's, it's very, very serious for him. So after the stormy first movement, we come into the second movement, which is what we're going to hear today. And that's uh, very much a piece of regeneration. It's like the pieces are being gathered up He's, he's pulling himself back together again. And uh, the, the final movement is it's like a drowning man sort of bursting out of the water and gasping uh, big breaths of fresh air. Uh, so I'd like to invite Janine to come and share her poem of Kintsugi. Kintsugi. A broken bowl, fractured fragments scattered. He gathers them up, pieces chipped and ugly. The bowl, like a life, wounded and shattered, fragile and faulty, no longer lovely. The master craftsman uses care and skill. His eyes see beyond the imperfection. He applies lacquer with gold powder and will give this delicate bowl resurrection. Its cracks are revealed so that all can see his healing scenes illuminate the floors. These golden repairs add new beauty. A treasured bowl is broken no more. He will mend the wounds with lines of gold. Celebrate renewal, precious to behold.
like to have a moment's silence because that was, like I said, the centerpiece of the performance today. Um, I'm just going backstage for a short period and I'd just like you to sit quietly and reflect on the artworks that we have in the foyer and the connections that you might be making, but just do them to yourself and in silence. And then after the performance, uh, we can all share what connections that we had. I'd like to bring my friend Janine back for an, another piece. This is a very special piece that we've got today because it's being premiered. Um, I have paired it with the uh, Chopin Nocturne. And Chopin is always considered the poet of the piano. And uh, I commissioned Janine to write a piece of prose to accompany this nocturne. And the brief that I gave her was that this nocturne deals with some very deep emotions. Chopin loved the um, genre of writing in the nocturne style because it's night time and uh, we've moved away from the big sonatas and the big symphonies and we're turning in on ourselves and the theatre of night time or sort of the platform of night time sort of brings everything back into ourselves and uh, there's stillness and quiet and we can have some uh, quiet and uh, gentle, gentle reflection. And so with the um, brief of like this, this nocturne takes you to emotions that are beyond description by words, um, I, I handed it over to Janine. And so I immersed myself in this piece of music and I listened to it on numerous occasions at different times of the day and um, all music will take us on a journey. So. This is sharing with you the journey that this piece of music um, took me on. Night. Night embraces me in a melancholy lullaby. At the closing of the day, drifting, floating, I teeter on the threshold. A vast silence beckoning, tugging. Alone in darkness, a mind assailed by phantoms, regret and longing wrestle. A labyrinth of thoughts, my body trembles and turns, rest is elusive. In the watches, caressed by a familiar lullaby, fists unclench, breathing slows, I sink into slumber, where in the night, lights of hope usher me into rest.
next piece is uh, Claire de Lune by Debussy. Debussy is probably known as the uh, painter of the, um, the piano. And it's lovely to be able to have a piece of Debussy in this program today with the uh, combined art exhibition. Uh, the um, image that Debussy is trying to, or is portraying very, very successfully in this piece is Moonlight, unlike that other piece of music that is uh, the C-sharp uh, sonata by Beethoven. That's not so much about Moonlight. That's more to do with Bach's preludes and fugues. But this piece today is... is uh, pure moonlight. It's this lovely concept of half shades and half lights. Um, so again, I invite you to vision the um, artworks or other, other works of art um, and, uh, and how they might have inspired Debussy with this piece.
Now we come to the piece by Rachmaninoff. I always say when you're listening to a piece of Rachmaninoff, you're listening to 100% proof Russian music. Um, he did immigrate to America in 1917. That was all related to the, uh, the Russian Revolution. Um, and uh, I'd say 90% or 99% of his music was composed whilst he was still in Russia. He relied heavily on um, the, the Russian surrounds and um, his countryside to inspire his music. And so when he moved to America, he just, uh, there was just too much clashing of cultures, so he, he didn't really write much after that point. So this prelude you hear today was composed in 1901. It is a military march, and I feel that he had some premonitions of what was going to happen later on in that century. Uh, there's uh, very menacing um, warlike themes that come through it. As well as that, there's a beautiful romance section with some luscious, gorgeous melodies. Um, he relied heavily on the um, Russian folk songs, and um, it's, uh, it's always exciting to work with his music because you just, hear, you just come across these melodies that you've never heard before, and they're just so exquisitely beautiful. So it's the uh, G minor prelude by Rachmaninoff.
Thank you. Thank you so much for coming today. I think there might be some more refreshments, um, but certainly please uh, hang around and um, talk to the artists. I can see there's uh, Lorraine, the beautiful creator of the uh, paintings. Stand up, Lorraine. Take a bow. <laughs> <laughs> Rain's done that, uh, that row of four, and then next to her is my cousin Ross, who's um, presented the beautiful uh, crab rock sculpture. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Ross is, Ross is kicking some amazing goals. If you are at my um, St. John's concert, he uh, premiered his uh, works, The Freestanding Masks, and uh, they're doing a, a tremendous job. I think they're all sold. Yeah? Not quite. Not quite, but um, <laughs> they're, they're really making a, a mark on... Um, um, on, on the artistic world. And Eloise, where are you Eloise? She stepped out, okay. Well, her um, breadth of her um, mediums that she works with is always astounding. So thank you very much for coming. Thank you.